so almost all the professional exams like ACCA or ICAG or ICANN, that is Chartered Accountant in Nigeria, Chartered Accountant in Ghana, and ACCA Global, and most of the um, university financial reporting or corporate reporting have this particular topic that questions are always set on in all the exams in financial reporting or corporate reporting we have this uh, particular topic that questions are always being set on and this topic is consolidated financial statement so if you are going to write a ca at level two at level three that is chartered accountant in gamma acca both at level two and level three you're going to write one in nigeria you have this you know question on consolidated financial statement that you are required to prepare the income statement or statement of financial position so um we are going to do a comprehensive video from the scratch from the very basic or from the very beginning to the advanced level where we'll be looking at uh, complex structures but you start from the very simple structures the linear or vertical you know um, structures from everything we'll be providing a video on that so we'll be doing it from the scratch to the end right so today basically in our consolidated financial statement or group accounts we are going to look at the introduction the basic things we are supposed to know that will help us throughout the consolidation process and probably you will know what is consolidation as well as what is consolidated financial statement by the end of today's introduction you know lesson on consolidation or group account and consolidation so consolidated financial statement as the topic is some also refer to it as group account is governed by series of international financial reporting standards. About six standards govern the preparation and presentation of entities that prepares consolidated financial statement. Remember when we say financial statement, we are looking at all the statements that is required by an entity to be presented at the reporting date. So here we are going to look at the standards that governs the um, preparation and presentation of financial statement that is consolidated financial statement and we will probably also look at some of the definitions what is consolidated financial statement what are parent and what give rise to group account or consolidated financial statement that is all we are going to look at in this particular lesson all right so basically we have six accounting standard governing the preparation and presentation of um, consolidated financial statement the first one has to do with iax 27 this has to do with separate financial statement separate financial statement we will extensively look at all the standards one by one here we are just giving an introduction on what governs the preparation and presentation of consolidated financial statements. So we have IEX 27, which is the um, presentation of a um, separate financial statement by a parent. In fact, by, by the close of this particular lesson, you know who a parent is or who an acquirer or a, an investor is in this question. And then we also have IEX 28, that is um, investment in associates. Counting for investment in associates. So when we talk about associates, um, we are looking at an entity that basically obtains significant influence over another entity. So here there is no control, but we will extensively go into IS28 later during our um, comprehensive consolidated financial statement um, lessons. Then we have IFRS 3. We have to talk about um, business combination, business combination. So this talks about this doesn't give the procedure on the, how to consolidate, but it complements another standard, which is the next one, IFRS. 
can for extend this is the the main standard that provide guidelines on the preparation and presentation of completed financial statement the procedures the things you are supposed to do to um, prepare your consolidated financial statements. So IFRS um, then is about consolidated financial statement. Twelve IFRS three is business combination. Business combination. This actually give guidelines to how to recognize um, a business combination, the identification of the acquirer or the parent, the determination of the acquisition date, and how to measure goodwill. So it actually complements this. And this also complements this in the consolidated financial statement process. But remember, this one does not prescribe how to consolidate, but this one does. Then we have the next standard, which is IFRS 11, which is um, joint arrangement. Joint arrangement, this is where two companies have control over another entity. And this joint arrangement gives rise to either um, joint operations, joint operations or joint ventures. So one of them is that joint operations or joint ventures. So that is the fifth standard governing the preparation and presentation of consolidated financial statement. And we also have IFRS 12. This one is basically disclosure of interest in other entity disclosure of interest and other entities. So we will basically go through all the standards and look at how to um, prepare a consolidated financial statement at the end of understanding the full international accounting standards. So as established earlier on, as a means of introduction, today basically we want to look at the definition of some key things. Now, before we start the whole thing, what is consolidated financial statement? The definition of some key things. What is consolidated financial statement? It is when an entity is required to prepare a um, statement of two or more entities as though they are a single economic unit. So here, two or more companies' statements are brought together or they are merged together or they are prepared together as two. Those entities or those entities are a single economic unit. So just like we've been preparing the income statement for one company, consolidated financial statement is basically for more than one company, but it is prepared as two, it is for a single economic unit. And here, what we basically do is to uh, merge the assets, the liabilities, the income, and the expenses of those entities, uh, you know, on the line by line basis, in the new rise to what we call a consolidated financial statement. So. If you are preparing a consolidated income statement, it's basically, let's assume we have entity A and entity B. So this place, there will be a revenue here, there will be a revenue here. It's just a, a matter of adding, adding like items and taking into consideration some exceptions because sometimes you have to eliminate certain transactions between the group. So that is basically the idea of consolidated financial statement. It is preparation of statement for more than one entity, but we prepare it as if those entities are single economic units. Most or other books call the consolidated financial statement as group account. Group account. So group account. Then there is a importance on what is a group. Now, anytime we talk about group, we are saying that a group is a parent, a parent plus subsidiaries subsidiaries all right this means that at any point in time if one wants to determine a group then it's going to be a parent and one or more subsidiaries the only way a parent can be more than one is when there is a joint arrangement that is two entities coming together under joint control to i mean acquired another entity so here we will have a parent and subsidiary that is we can have more than one subsidiaries in a group now that we know that a group constitutes a parent and a subsidiaries what then is a parent 
and what then is a subsidiary. So here we want to look at what is parent. Parent simply means an entity that has obtained control over another entity. An entity that has obtained control over another entity. Another name for parent is actually the acquirer. The acquirer, we can also say the investor. The investor or the one purchasing the other entity is what we refer to as the parent. Now, the parent is obtaining control over the subsidiary. Remember that there is a key word over here, which is what? Control. And we will probably look at control and the IFRS then What is control? Because it's the whole thing, uh, you know, a whole concept over there. Then let's come to what is a subsidiary. Now, when we talk about subsidiary, they are basically entities that uh, have been controlled or that is controlled by another entity. Entities controlled by another entity are referred to as, uh, you know, subsidiary. So in a typical example, if A, PLC has obtained control over B, PLC, then in this case, we say that A is the parent and then B is the subsidiary. That is when A, PLC has obtained control over, over subsidiary. That means there are some times that the entity may not obtain control. The entity may obtain what we call significant influence. We will look at the types of you know acquisition and we will look at the various uh, means to call the parent and then to call the what the other entity that is being acquired. So here yeah, subsidiary is basically entity that is controlled by another entity. So here the word again is for control. So remember we will look at what is control. Another name for the subsidiary is basically the acquiry. So the acquiry or the investee. The investee. So the entity that is being acquired is sometimes or mostly referred to as the subsidiary or the acquiry over here. Then again, we want to look at what is an associate. What is an associate? Because if you look at IES 27, we are saying that accounting for investment in associates. What then is an associate? When we talk about an associate, we are saying that it's an entity that has obtained significant influence over another entity. So anytime the entity does not obtain control, but the entity is obtaining a significant influence, then we are saying that the entity that is being controlled, sorry, that is being acquired is an associate, but not a subsidiary. Remember that the most, you know, um, practical thing to identify this difference is the acquisition of shares or the number of rights in the other entity. So if you acquire the 50% plus of the equity shares of an entity, then we are saying that you have obtained control. Here, yeah, if you're able to buy between 20% and 49% and, and of the equity shares of the entity, then we say you have what, obtained significant influence. Anything below gives you another form of acquisition, which is not either investment in a subsidiary or investment in associates. So basically, this is the definition of the key things you will probably be mentioning in our study or in our journey of consolidated financial statements. So in summarizing our introduction, we want to look at the various forms of acquisition that can be carried out by an entity. So here we will have what we call a subsidiary. <clears throat> Remember that anytime there is an acquisition, the acquisition will give rise to the entity being acquired to be called a name depending on the type of acquisition that is being carried out and the name you should what you should call the entity that is being acquired. So here, if the entity acquired a certain percentage of their ordinary shares, then you will call it a subsidiary. Mostly it is the number of shares that helps us to determine if the other entity that is being acquired should be called a subsidiary, an associate, you know, a joint arrangement or others. It depends on the number of you know, equity shares, the parent entity is what is acquiring. So again, we have what we call 
and then associate we have what we call joint arrangement and then the last one is basically and this and this all right so we want to see what will give rise to a subsidiary acquisition of what you know shares will give rise to an associate and how do we account for them now anytime we are looking at a subsidiary a subsidiary is when you have acquired 50 percent plus of the um, ordinary shares of another entity it gives you a control and that control is what we call a subsidiary so here you are going to obtain what we call control remember that there are exceptions where entity will acquire less than the 50 percent of the ordinary shares but still the entity will obtain control we will look at those exceptions when we are looking at the term or the concept of control then an associate we are looking at when the entity is acquiring 20 percent or um less than 49 percent of the equity shares of another entity or the voting right of another entity then it gives rise to significant influence you are going to obtain significant influence and that gives you the entity that you are acquiring to be called an associate and then there are sometimes two entities will come together to obtain control so two entities come together to obtain control so here we don't have a specific um, you know percentage but you should know that two entities come together to i mean acquire another entity so we assume that a plc plus b plc these two comes together to acquire c plc you know, plc simply means public limited company so these two entities coming together to acquire this we call it joint arrangement and then the last one any of an acquisition and another entity which does not fall which, uh, among these three will probably be under <clears throat> others so for instance if you have uh, you know acquired less than 20% um, probably you will just account for the investment in that particular entity as maybe you're going to obtain a dividend or interest at the end of the period but you don't obtain any of these um, you know form of acquisition now so how do we account for this so this is when you are required to prepare your full consolidated financial statement and this is where you are also in fact here we don't we are not required to prepare consolidated financial statement but you are required to account for your interest in the associate using the equity method we will look at equity method later on and then here too you are required to prepare your full um, financial statement sometimes either at equity using the equity method or um, using um, other means of accounting for joint arrangement and they have series of you know methods to account for either joint ventures or joint operations and probably here you have to um, prepare your statement in accordance with other um, international financial reporting standards in case you don't have your acquisition falling among these three categories of acquisition so basically that is the introduction to consolidated financial statement or group accounts we will probably take the standards one by one in our subsequent you know lessons thank you